Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace, worshipping you, Lord, for who you are, praising you for all your, all your goodness, for all that you are, thanking Lord, thanking you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Thank you for speaking to us through your word, through the book of Romans, now through the gospel of Luke. Father, help us know you, help us know your son, Jesus Christ, and through him, you all the more as we study the gospel, Lord. Father, we come at today's session into your hands. We come at each one of us, Lord. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us and you would multiply your word through each one of us. Enable each one of us to, to be bearers of your light, bearers of your word in, into, into wherever places, Lord, you are, you are calling us to, you are drawing us to, Lord. Help us be your witnesses, Lord. Father, as we, we, as we look into Luke uh, chapter 5, open our, open our hearts, open our minds so that we will, we will understand it, Lord. We will be, as we think about uh, the, the dreadfulness of sin, help us look into our own lives, Lord. Speak to us and give us power and ability so that we would live for you, Lord. Sanctify us so that we would we would be living a blameless life for your glory, Lord. Submit each one of us. We bring all our personal struggles and trials and difficulties to you, Lord, and help us for the next 40-45 minutes. Keep them away and be at your feet. Just like Mary and not like Martha, Lord, thinking about multiple things, but focusing on you to listen from you, to, to receive from you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to see you all. In fact, I can't see any one of you except uh, Sandra. So, yeah, now I can see Maria. Maybe that will encourage others also. That doesn't matter. Okay, let's uh, go straight into the study. Today, we won't be having a very long study. I hope it won't be a one-hour study. Uh, we'll be looking into chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. I didn't want to enter into the, into the next session, next uh, narrative. But uh, I think today's is uh, good and long enough. So Luke is uh, continuing his account of Jesus uh, working miracles, Jesus revealing himself, revealing his power, not only his power, his compassion, um, giving us solid insights into, into who Jesus is, his, the person of Jesus Christ. Um, let's read our text. Uh, can, can the screen sharing be enabled? It's done. Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 12 onwards. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded. 
for a proof to them but now even more the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray so we are going to look into a very short passage uh, 12 to 16 when the bible talks about leprosy uh, i think it is important that we we get the background clear uh, it doesn't specifically mean uh, it in the modern sense now when we talk about leprosy it is one particular disease caused by one particular pathogen mycobacterium lepera we call it the hansen's disease but uh, back then it it was a blanket uh, term of uh, not a particular disease but a group of skin diseases dreaded dreadful serious uh, skin diseases and we see the book of leviticus giving detailed prescriptions of on on how to correctly diagnose leprosy the category of leprosy uh, how to treat it what are the isolation measures to be taken very meticulously described <clears throat> and the primary purpose was to to discern if suppose a particular person uh, in the camp in the camp of god's children in the israelites among these israelites had a skin lesion so it was a rep, the it was the duty and the responsibility of the priest to to examine it and discern if it is harmless uh, or does it belong to the category of uh, leprosy if so uh, the 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 consequences would be would be very severe very uh, the consequence of being diagnosed positive you know when the term diagnosed positive comes you know we always now think about covid right because it's been you know coming again and again these days so um back then it's not like being diagnosed covid positive that would mean even for covid you know initially we had we didn't know the length of isolation the length of uh, quarantine that was needed it stretched uh, in our state uh, one poor uh, man had you know continually being tested positive because of the dead viruses that now we realize is dead virus uh, in his na- nasal mucosa he has been diagnosed in, as positive rt pcr positive even up to 45 48 days poor guy had to be in his home uh, all those days now we we know we can be out in 5 days 7 days okay but back then the consequence of being diagnosed leprosy positive was so devastating you know um, it was considered uh, it was called a living death you know, those people were called uh, considered as walking death because Uh, they would be cast out of the families they'll be chased out of the camp out of their community um, even even the geographical location they were they were pushed out uh, and invariably they will succumb to it very rarely would uh, would people be healed uh, and there were prescriptions on 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 confirming whether it is healed and taking them back uh, the ritual of cleansing and all of that we find in the old testament and on these these lepers they they often it is said that they form colonies they form small communities outside the camp and we know one such uh, community of 10 lepers uh, encountering jesus christ you know so yeah that's how that was uh, how that was the consequence of uh, being diagnosed positive and here it's something something very interesting luke the physician makes a very particular uh, very uh, important point you know he 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 doesn't casually say this man had leprosy he says he was full of leprosy he had advanced disease uh, verse 12 a we find um let's read verse 12 uh the second half says while he was in in the cities there came a man full of leprosy and he saw jesus he fell on his face and begged him lord if you will you can make me clean so what is this this man saying uh, when he saw jesus he 
he was pleading he was he fell on his face uh, he had no claims for his own he was just pleading for uh, healing i'm forced to think that he would have definitely heard about jesus christ you know his ministry is growing and the news is spreading and even this person who probably would be spending much of his time in the outskirts uh, outside the camp heard about him heard about jesus and he was probably uh, you know he took the risk of coming into you know among the people among the masses so he heard about jesus and he 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 to him and he fell on his feet and he was begging him lord if you are willing you can make me clean and that is very important that verse if you are willing you can make me clean here the leper is making a distinction between the ability of jesus the power of jesus the capability of jesus and the willingness of jesus christ the willingness of christ to use his power no that is what he is doing the leper here is let me repeat that sentence statement the leper what he is doing is he is making a distinction between the power of jesus christ and the willingness of jesus christ to use that power um i would say he has got his theology right on that point uh from what we know he didn't say that i know lord that it is your will that i would be clean i would be healed um you it is always your will that i will be clean would you heal me if you can no that's not the way he puts it he knew that he can if he wills you know that is very very important um you know when we talk about the attributes of god especially the omnipotence of god you know we define the omnipotence of god you know most often we think that omnipotence of god means god can do everything you know that's how i thought it was but that is not the biblical definition of or meaning of omnipotence of god omnipotence is defined theologically as god is able to do whatever he wills god is able to bring about all that his holy will wills now that is the definition of omnipotence of god if it is god's will he anything that his will approves anything that is according to his will he will bring it to pass so that is how we define uh, the omnipotence of god now a word about uh, the, the the whole business of uh, miracle healing ministries uh, you know most of them operate on uh, on two flawed ideas two flawed principles that we we have to discuss at this point of time when when we see such a beautiful verse there lord if you are willing you can make me clean you know two flawed principles which i want to share number one is uh, they say they claim that in order for one to be healed a necessary condition is that before you are healed you have to believe that with certainty that you are going to be healed you know this is a necessary precondition that they place if if you want to be healed you have to believe that you will be healed that is one way of putting it uh, and they say any lack of such faith is going to be an obstacle for healing to come so whenever the results don't happen they will say you don't have faith so the whole thing is non verifiable you know you can blame it on and that is such a sad thing you know Uh, these poor souls who come to them they'll end up uh, being overburdened initially they are burdened with their physical ailment now they are burdened because they are they are made to believe that they don't have enough faith you know i personally know many people disillusioned by this kind of teaching so that is not biblical the second uh, a very similar related flaw that uh, a flawed principle or idea that they operate upon is that they say you have to believe that you are already healed even before you are healed uh you have to believe that you are healed so i, I don't think that is even truthful no to say that you know you know you are not healed but you have to force upon you and you have to believe something that is not real so that is 
a very wrong way of doing it and that is a uh, in fact a wrong interpretation of the verse uh, you know uh, mark 11:24 it says whatever you ask in prayer believe that, that you have received it and it will be yours you know that is cherry picking because we have uh, a, a long list of bible verses that that uh, teach about prayer you have verses that's you know 1 john 5:14 says ask according to his will and your prayers are going to be answered so you take both of them together when you ask certain things in god's will be sure that you will have it because it is god's will as good as you have maybe it might take some time but the will of god is the key factor so uh let's not fall into that trap let's not fall into that category of uh, thinking uh, and we don't find that in this text also in this text what we see is a totally different uh, you know a person who got his theology right at least at this point at this particular uh issue if you are willing you can let's move on verse uh, 14 onwards 14 and 15 13 what happened jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying i will be clean immediately the leprosy left him was 14 and he charged him to tell no one but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as moses commanded for a proof to them but now even more the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of his infirmities something interesting happened uh Jesus heals him he got healed and Jesus is advising him not to tell it all but rather to show him himself only to the priest so that all the ceremonial aspects would be taken care of and he could be reinstated back to the community the covenant community uh what does this man do he does exactly the opposite right you know from inference we can read that he just probably he would he would be running all over the place and sharing about Christ Jesus uh sharing to more and more people <clears throat> i was thinking you know when we are commanded to go unto the ends of the world uh preach and teach and share and witness be his witness and make disciples we find it so hard and when this man is commanded not to share and he does exactly the opposite what was the result the the ministry of jesus was widening further you know his reach was widening um ministry was flourishing jesus became more and more busy because more people were coming uh work became more demanding for jesus christ you can put it that way uh but what happened was 16 but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray this is this is not a one time incident it says but he would withdraw to desolate places and and pray so it's like you know uh, more and more reports you know were spreading about jesus he went uh, going abroad great crowds kept coming and this was the pattern of that season but jesus had another pattern in place he would frequently withdraw to desolate places not just one place maybe he's in this village he will find a desolate place somewhere there and he will go there and pray maybe he next day he will be in another village even there he would find that corner for him to be with his father so jesus knew his priorities he would leave the crowds to pray and i am very sure that even his disciples would have said things like this how cruel i feel this is cruel how in uh, compassionate uh, and all these people are gathering if he if he could you know avoid that prayer uh, for some time he could serve at least two or three people more he could alleviate the suffering of a few uh, a few people more that is one way of looking at it another way would be maybe the the judas way would be 
very poor business strategy you know uh, very poor ministry strategy uh, doesn't jesus know that you have to make hay when the when the when the, when the sun is shining bright uh, and there will be another category uh, that uh, that would say probably the first category would say we need to teach jesus that serving hands are much holier than praying lips you know these are all world views that we encounter you know they use biblical words they use biblical proverbs uh, you know a good way of i i don't say it a good way i don't know uh, a way that christian institutions make uh, employees work is by using words like you have to walk an extra mile you know like all those good phrases can be used um uh, serving hands are holier than praying lips but jesus knew that both are equally holy both are equally holy he knew his priorities he knew uh, the importance of each one jesus was not always hiding in a closet and praying all the day no he was not always working exhausting himself but he knew he had to back up he he had to withdraw he had to recharge himself he had to be with his father uh, do we do we have this pattern in our lives in place i was thinking about myself you know there are certain seasons of life when we when we tend to invest so much into work so much into all the activities maybe ministry maybe our 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 our, our other jobs uh do we find time to withdraw you know you have to withdraw i have to withdraw myself it doesn't happen automatically crowd the crowd is not going to leave you yeah it is time for jesus quiet time time to for jesus to be with the father now let's all give him space no that will never ever happen that will not ha- that never happen to jesus that will not happen to you that will not happen to me i have to prioritize my life i have to i have to make time I, i cannot find time time will not just come you know uh, time is not hiding anywhere for us to us to us to go and find it we have to make time and making time involves withdrawing from certain things and uh, advancing to certain other things so uh, jesus is is bringing to us a very very important model you know this is important in ministry uh it is important in family it is important in our work areas you know because we have lot of holy in in good explanations to give you know jesus could have given 100 1000 explanation to jesus uh, to the father father you have sent me to to do, do to do this work right let me do that work first you know i have been with you all through eternity and in a few years time i'll be back to you, back with you so let me let me finish of the work as much as i can no that, that's not the way we need to think because you know all of these uh, worldly explanations and worldly you know thinking make hay while the sun shines serving hands and all of that all of those thinking all those all of those principles operate on a temporal timeline but as children of god we are operating on a transcendent eternal uh, framework uh, whether it's time or whether it is in terms of results of our work fruitfulness of our work you know the, the principle the, the operating principle is different and and we need to uh, all our work has to be the expression of the relationship that we have uh, with the father in christ jesus so if that is not in place if that is not nurtured and kept in place you know the everything else will be disconnected from that relationship and it's going to be catastrophic it is going to be catastrophic so let's uh, examine our lives uh, maybe some of us as a student some of us uh, we all know how our time is being consumed and we all know how we can prioritize how we can withdraw when we can withdraw to where we can withdraw all of this is uh, important yeah the expository part of the text is over so i'm going to spend some time doing something that i don't usually do 
so the rest of the Bible study, today's study is not exposition. This is a little uh, stretch of imagination, if you could say, reading between the lines. But uh, uh, I want to spend some time on it. I am going to, let's spend some time comparing sin and leprosy because uh, it is it is safe to assume that uh, Bible does that. Uh, let let me uh, let me take you to no no we need not read into maybe you can note that Isaiah chapter one verse four uh, the first few verses when we read we find scripture comparing the the sore the source of the of a leper um, is used as a picture of sin uh, so that is a general picture that we we tend to see in the scripture so it is safe to uh, to look into, to have a comparative study between leprosy and sin. So the reason why I, I want to stress again and repeat that this is not verse by verse exposition because the leprosy that we are we read in that text uh, is not sin. It is it, it, the only connection that that leper had with sin is the same connection that you and I have with sin, you know, being, for, being born in a, and living in a fallen world. So let's not make that uh, error of judging that, you know, yes, uh, he is, uh, he had a severe advanced leprosy. That means he has an, he's a, he's a dreadful sinner. No, I'm not going to do, take that route. That is not the way we need to handle scriptures. But leprosy can be beautifully compared to, leprosy can be a beautiful picture of sin. Uh, and let's dig into that. So that we'll understand sin better, we'll, we'll be able to fight sin better. That's the whole point of it. Uh, point of comparison number one, leprosy has cutaneous manifestations, skin manifestations. We all know it presents with sores, ugly sores in the skin and late stages, the extremities, they fall off. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a very... Um, ugly looking situation at that point of time. But when we study the pathology behind that, it is much deeper than skin, you know. Uh, mycobacterium leprae, the bacteria there, infects much deeper tissues. It infects the nerves, in fact. Um, cooler nerves, they say, with, with the lower temperature. And infecting the nerves, what happens is the nerves become uh, non-functional, especially the sensory nerves. And we lose the, the patient uh, become desensitized to, to painful stimulus. So the patient uh, is unable to feel pain. So the patient end up hurting himself. You know, the advantage pain is a blessing for us because when, suppose I, I hurt my finger, then it's going to be aching for a few days and I'll be protecting my finger so that it will not be hurting and I will not injure that finger again. So uh, pain preserves us. Pain prevents us from injuring ourselves again and again and destroying the whole part, whole organ, the whole extremity. But in such patients, that doesn't happen. So they, they keep hurting the same area again and again and ultimately healing never happens and uh, it becomes a, 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 a non-healing ulcer or a sore. Lack of pain resulting in repeated injuries, impaired healing, and non-healing source. That's a pathology. So I have taught you uh, some basic uh, pathology there. Now, coming to sin, you know, sin has external manifestations. We know the, the whole list that we find towards the end of Romans chapter one, a big list of external manifestations of sin. But before writing that list of external manifestation, Paul brings... Uh, very clearly that deep within all of that external manifestation, there is a deep-rooted pathology there. You know, the root cause is a heart that is numb uh, towards God, towards things of God. So uh, a, a lack of sensitivity to God, uh, not realizing that, you know, God is glorious, God is beautiful. So what does man do? He exchanges the glory of God because he is so insensitive to the glory of God that he, he finds glory in other things. So that is the essence of sin. A heart that doesn't cherish in God and his glory and his beauty, but rather 
in in things created that's what we find in romans chapter 1 uh heart that exchanges god's glory the creator's glory to the glory of created things created animals and bees and all of that so that's the first point of comparison not just cuteness not just surface not just external but it's a deep rooted heart issue both leprosy and sin the second point of comparison is that uh mere surface remedies cannot cure leprosy it's very very interesting and to to note that even with all the advances in medical science still it is a difficult to treat disease it's a it's a very difficult to treat disease and we have not eradicated eliminated it from uh, uh from the from the from the world similarly uh, uh you know, surface measures cannot cure sin cannot heal sin behavioral therapy is not the ultimate uh, ultimate solution to sin only the regenerating work of the holy spirit followed by the sanctifying work of the holy spirit and finally the glorifying work uh, is the is the solution for sin oh, everything else is is surface remedies might give you a a, a symptomatic uh, cure for some time but but the disease will not uh, leave us so don't don't go after none of us should be people going after you know self help programs and self help books maybe best sellers but none of them is going to help the only book that can help uh, help us is the word of god and because the holy spirit works through the word of god so that's point number 2 of comparison number 3 leprosy spreads sin also spreads uh we know um leprosy starts uh, as a, as a tiny spot of a, a deep pigmented area or a hypopigmented area then it it spreads to the there is a local spread and also there is a distant spread uh there are all categories of leprosy posi bacilli and all of that uh this is not a, a medical lecture so we know it spreads and it spreads bad that's why you know end of the day in very severe conditions the all of the fingers might not be there nose will not be there ears will not be there uh, it's a very terrible condition so uh such same is is the case of sin uh there is this 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 snowball effect if you can call it you know like a snowball rolling from the hill top it's good to play with when it's handy and manageable you you feel the fun you feel it exciting but as it rolls down it gathers more and more weight it gathers more and more momentum and finally it is you know it said that it can grow so big and heavy and the the whole momentum can be so huge that it can destroy a whole village uh down down the hill so sin does that sin is deadly sin um you know let's let's be very clear about it let us pursue with all our might to to kill every element of sin that is known to us in ourselves uh, before sin uh killing us that's what romans 8 verse 13 says right if you do not live do not mortify your sin by the by the power of the holy spirit you will die that's what paul says very clearly if you don't kill sin sin will kill you that is uh the plain biblical teaching so uh leprosy is not going to be remaining there just like that without spreading sin will not remain there don't just think that oh it's just a small sin affecting a small area of my life all the other areas of my life i'm pursuing sanctification no that will not happen the fourth and the final point of comparison which i would like to share is leprosy ultimately leads to death and sin also ultimately leads to death uh 
in leprosy it's like e- even patient even before they actually physically die as i said they are they are thought of as dead people living dead people walking dead that's what they are called uh because uh, practically they are as good as dead one they will surely die but they are dying in the process you know they are not feeling pain uh, and as a result the blood supply is going to be affected the local reflexes that maintain maintain blood supply so their extremities would be as good as death so death is growing uh, uh, in their bodies so and finally the government uh, of a of a uh, infected with leprosy what do what do we do we put it in the fire right so i think a very good uh, very strong comparison there similarly a sinner is alive but is is dead unto god is dead to god is spiritually dead uh, cons- uh, in when you, you know thinking about the uh, all, all his relationship with god is as good as dead uh, his ability to appreciate the glory of god as good as dead he is alive unto sin but dead unto god as we find again in romans and that's not the end there is going to be a second death as revelation says uh in the lake of fire so all those of all of us uh, i don't like to use the word us there if all those people all those men and women whose whose garments are not cleansed by the blood of christ jesus us garments if still if 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 the people if they are still wearing the garment of sin you know the end would be in the lake of uh, fire so yeah we were looking into four points of comparison about sin uh i pray that that would help us uh, be very very serious about sin that is not um uh, one of the earliest camps which i attended i still have that quote uh in my heart the speaker uh gave all these illustration this one is this illustration of snowball the second is an illustration of a sugar coated pill you know initially it's sweet but as we continue chewing on it it's going to be bitter and it's going to make us vomit it's going to you know it's going to be very bad so uh, let us be very serious in in our prayers we should plead that uh, god uh would you reveal all those hurting it hurtful areas all those areas that that cause you hurt that you're not happy with in my life just like uh david uh in psalm 51 search me o lord and try me see if there is any offensive way in me uh let's mean that and pray that and also we looked into jesus his his ministry his compassion and at the same time his uh, his discipline in prioritizing his life his discipline in managing time his discipline in ensuring that he has his spiritual disciplines in place uh the the leper his uh, his his theology in place he he valued the will of god as perfect and right and the the key factor that drives the the potence of god so yes it was a short study but i believe we have a lot of practical applications uh let's pray loving father thank you lord for your word thank you for reminding us the ugliness of sin the the seriousness of sin the how pathological sin is your word compares sin with leprosy and and thank you for helping us get a better grasp better picture of that comparison lord help us fight sin help us kill sin lord because you you died uh you you gave up your son to die for us because of our sin father we thank you for teaching us from your own ex- example the importance of uh, spending time with you lord 
Father, help us be people who who love to follow your will. People, help us be your children who would uh, who would want only your will to happen in our life because your will is the best thing that can happen for us, Lord. Because you are a God who loves us. Because you are a God who knows everything. And because you are a God who can do all that you will. Help us trust your will and help us say, if you will, you can, O oh Lord. And we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.